Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Marissa. So today I am getting my nails done and I'm getting a pedicure. I leave for Mexico less than a week from now. Um, today's Saturday, I leave on Friday. So I'm trying to get as much done as possible a few days before we leave. I'm getting my nails and my pedicure today. In a few days, I'm getting an eyelash extension fill and I have to pack. So this whole video is just going to be me getting ready for Mexico and me packing. Right now I'm outside of Kohl's. I have to make an Amazon return. Um, so I'm going to go in there and return the tripod that I ordered because it was a little too small. The new one I ordered just got delivered to my house today. But after I do this, I'm going to go right to the nail salon and get my nails done. This is what we're working with. Um, every nail is a different color. I got them a month ago before my birthday and they're really grown out. This one, I don't know if you can really see it. Not really, it's very bright out. This one's broken. They're chipped, the gel is lifting. It's a whole situation. I'm at the point where if I run my fingers through my hair, my hair like sticks under them because they're lifting. So the goal today is to get almost like a French manicure, but different colored tips. I think I'm gonna do a different like pastelish or maybe like neon color for each nail. An hour later and I am done. So I ended up picking five different colors. I knew that I wanted like colored French tips, but I didn't really like the colors I picked out. Half of them were neon and the other half were pastel. So I asked my nail tech if she could just pick one or two colors that she thinks I should do. So I ended up getting these. They're like teal-ish or like aquamarine. I don't know what you'd call this color. And then pink. They're super, super cute. Very summery, giving major vacation vibes. I have like 40 minutes before my pedicure appointment with my mom, which is at a different nail salon. So I am gonna go into Marshall's and see if I can find any Calvin Klein bras. When I was in, I don't know what my hair is doing right there. When I was in Kohl's returning my like Amazon thing, they give you $5 in Kohl's cash every time you return something there from Amazon. And I always throw it away because I'm an idiot and I never have time to like look around Kohl's. But I saw these really cute freaking Calvin Klein sports bras that I've always wanted. And there's a baby blue one and a lavender one. But if I had been saving up all the Kohl's cash that I've gotten from returning stuff from Amazon, I probably would have a better time spending $30 on a sports bra. Um, but I always threw them away. So I think I'm going to go check out Marshall's and see if they have any cute colors. I have two, but they're both like triangle bras. One is dark blue and the other one's like a maroon color. I really want like the sports bra cut ones. I like sleeping in them. I think they're really comfy. I can wear them around the house. I could honestly probably wear them as sports bras or I could wear them out. I don't have a lot going on up here anyway. So it's not like I need a ton of support in that area, but I'm gonna go to Marshall's and see if they have them any cheaper. It's an old game. They don't even like make you know any further additions. Good afternoon. It's like 12:40 right now, and the last couple days have been a little bit crazy. I spent like 10-ish hours helping Allie move into her new apartment yesterday. And the apartment is so freaking cute. It's so nice. Stainless steel appliances, really nice floors. The bathroom is freaking massive. It could be another bedroom. I think she's really gonna like it there. And she's also less than 10 minutes away from me, which selfishly is a big bonus as well. Um, I'm just about to run a few errands. I have to go to the store and get Mr. Clean Magic Eraser powder bleach and like a little brush um i need to clean my white adidas and they're like they're cloud foam so they have like mesh and the first week that i wore them to work like two months ago my phone's just shaking really bad i stepped in mud and they're not like horribly horribly dirty but i just really it drives me insane every time i wear them that they're not like crystal white anymore so, I don't know why I said crystal, because crystals are clear. Whatever. Um, so, I'm going to go to Walmart. I keep seeing stuff on TikTok about people washing their white shoes. 
and I've taken some of those little like recipes and we're gonna see what happens. I also have to clean my Air Force Ones, which is way easier. I'm just gonna use the magic eraser for that. And I'm gonna clean my white Crocs and my white flip flops also. I figured if I'm washing one pair of shoes, I might as well just do all of them. So today is Tuesday, I leave Friday morning. My plan maybe later tonight is to wash all of my clothes right now. Or maybe I'll wait to do that Thursday because I really hate coming home and still having dirty clothes. I'm not sure, but I have to wash all my clothes because there's some things I've worn within the last like week that I know I'm going to want to bring to Mexico. So I want to wait to do that like last minute kind of so that I can get all that stuff packed. But in the meantime, I'll probably start packing like the easy things that I know I'm not going to need the next couple days. So. After I go to Walmart, I'm also going to go to the library. I went the other day, probably like four or five days ago, and the three books I got were supposed to be for vacation, and I finished all three. Um, two of them I finished in one day. One of them took me two days, so I'm at a red light. Um, this one, it is called my story by elizabeth smart this was a really good book i was really familiar with this case back when i was little when it first happened so she was a girl who was kidnapped in the middle of the night like in her bedroom by this guy that her family had hired to do like roofing for them and he was obviously insane so him and his wife kidnapped her in utah she was gone for nine months and then she was eventually rescued so that was a really good book and then there was another book. I'm not gonna lift it because I'm driving. But it's called, um, okay, I'm at another red light. Then there was this book and it's called A Stolen Life by J.C. Dugard. And this is probably one of the best books I've ever read. So JC was a girl who was kidnapped on her way to the bus when she was 11 and she was held captive for 18 years and then she was finally rescued. Um, she'd had two kids like in that whole process and what's insane about this book is that I was reading it in the courtyard of my complex a few days ago, Friday, and I had just read a page where she basically talks about like the investigators who saved her and she says um, her goal in writing the book is basically to inform people that they need to speak to speak up when they see something that seems out of the ordinary. Um, the man who kidnapped her was on parole for a few other crimes. And his parole officers thought that there was something sketchy going on. So they finally investigated it and found her. And she had literally been kidnapped 18 years before then. And they finally were able to rescue her after all that time. But after I read a couple pages of that book, um, a woman in my complex ran out of a building in her bra and jeans screaming crying for someone to help her and there was a guy behind her trying to go after her like he was going to hit her again he get just kept trying to like grab at her and she saw me and darted across the courtyard towards me as soon as he saw me he went back into his building and she had said he had just been hitting her and she really needed someone to help her and call the police so i called the police um they ended up coming and taking care of the situation. That guy doesn't even live in my complex, so he was kicked out of whatever friends he was staying with. Um, the cops got involved, some of the people that work at the complex got involved, but what really struck me about that situation is the fact that five minutes earlier, I had just read a page that talked about saying something and speaking up when you notice that something's not right. And, um, I just thought it was so interesting that like at that exact moment pretty much is when this girl came out and desperately needed someone to help her and what was even more insane is that a lot of people in my complex walked by while she was like screaming and crying and 
that guy kept coming outside to keep like yelling things at her. And so many people in my complex just walked by with their head down and like didn't do anything, which I just think is so sad. And I've watched a lot of crime shows and things before, like true crime shows. And I always hear stories about people like in their time of need running up to someone's house and like knocking on the door for help or something and people just not helping them. There used to be this show called What Would You Do? And it was a completely scripted show, but they would take actors and set them up in situations to see how the general public would respond. So I remember one time they took two actors and they were having a physical, a fake physical altercation in a park. And they wanted to see how many people would stop to help the woman who was being hurt. And they were out there for probably like three hours and one person the entire day stopped to help. And I feel like so many people are just afraid to get involved because they don't know what's gonna happen. Like, you don't know if that person has a weapon or if they'll do something to you, which I understand that, but it never crossed my mind one single time to pick up my stuff. My phone stopped recording because it got too hot. Um, it's like 87 degrees out, but I guess when you have your phone on a little stand on your windshield and the sun is like beating down on it, it can get a little warm. I was just gonna say, it never crossed my mind for one single second to see that woman pick up my stuff and like go inside and not help her. So I just thought it was really, really sad and really eye-opening to see how many people can firsthand see a really hard situation like in front of their face and choose to go about their day and ignore what's happening right in front of them. Um, so PSA, if you're ever out somewhere or something's ever happening and someone really seems like they need your help, I, I just, I would rather get involved and help someone, even if it meant like putting myself in the middle of it, than completely ignore that person and then deal with the aftermath of wondering like what happened to them but I'm at Walmart now I'm gonna run in and get my stuff and then after this I'm just gonna go to the library get a couple more books and go home and start cleaning my shoes good afternoon it's like noonish on Wednesday and I'm finally gonna start packing so I have to get my suitcase from the closet um, I still have a full basket of laundry over here I'm probably going to do that laundry tonight or tomorrow because there's some stuff in there that I know I'm going to want to pack. But in the meantime, I'm going to pack everything that I at least have clean and ready right now, including my carry-on. So I'll put in a video of that. It'll be a time-lapse video. I'm not going to make you sit through and watch me pack for the entire like hour or so that it's going to take. Hello, it is technically Friday morning. It's one o'clock in the morning right now. I have to be awake to be at the airport in three hours, so that's exciting. Um, I feel like I never sleep the night before I'm about to fly, especially if I have to fly early, so this is nothing new. I am fully packed. I have my carry-on, my personal item, and my suitcase. The only things not in there right now are the moisturizer that I'm using tomorrow morning, my Apple Watch charger, my phone charger, and I think that's it. Everything else is packed and laid out. I'm bringing a brand new toothbrush, so my regular toothbrushes in my bathroom, and I think everything's all set, but I got my lashes done today. That was the last step into getting fully ready for Cancun, and I'm exhausted, but I'm super excited, and I just, I don't know. I don't really know what to expect. I've never been on a tropical vacation before, so... I'm really, really, really excited. I think we have some fun stuff planned. Just laying by the pool in the sun and the pool water, like feeling like bath water, I feel like is just gonna be everything that I need. So I cannot wait. And as for right now, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back and I will definitely be vlogging this entire trip. But for now, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on. Bye, see you in Mexico.